Hey guys, it's Paul from Glitch Free Gaming here, and it's time to do my top 5 games of the year. So in at number 5 is a game that came very early on in 2018, it's Far Cry 5. And I kind of slightly forgot about this game until I was doing my, my top game of the year list, and I was, you know, sorting through what had been really fun this year, and I remembered I put a lot of time into Far Cry 5. Like, we're talking close to 100 hours, maybe only slightly less. I'd kind of fallen out of love with the Far Cry series a little bit. I really enjoyed Far Cry 3. I wasn't such a big fan of Four, and the less we talk about Primal, probably the better. But the idea of this kind of grabbed my attention and I'm really glad I picked it up. Mixed up the formula just a little bit and just enough to kind of make the game feel fresh, but the real standout for me of the entire thing and what made it possibly where that is in my game of the year list and what it was as a game and just kind of revamped the series a little bit, even though it was very similar to the other ones, is the storyline. The setting, the character building, the fact that on more than one occasion it was probably a little bit close to the bone for some of the stuff that is going on in the world right now, it just rung very true with me and thoroughly enjoyed it. The ending that I got is the one that the next Far Cry game, so the one we're getting this year, in fact in a couple of months now, is going to lead off of. And while it might have been a little bit far-fetched, it's not something that was too crazy for where the game was heading and of course it's given us the lead into another game it's set in the same world with some of the same characters and if the story building is half as good in this one that's coming up then I'll be more than happy so yeah and at number five for me on my top five games of the year is Far Cry 5 I found the temple. Great. In at number four for me is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, I was about halfway through this game when Game of the Year came round. I'm very much close to the end now and would possibly have made it higher if I'd have been this far in the game when Game of the Year was decided. It's more of the same. If you enjoyed the Tomb Raider reboots, the, the last few of those, it's absolutely more of the same. More of the same combat. You can sneak around with a bow, which is just the best part of that game, is being stealthy. Sneaking around with a bow, they've added in some different stealth mechanics, like covering yourself in mud to walk along certain walls, or take down heat detection, and things like that from different types of enemies. The puzzles, for my money, again, are more of what you've come to expect from the last two reboots. There's some easier ones, but then again, there's some more difficult ones in there. Or maybe it's just the fact that I'm not particularly great at puzzling sections in Tomb Raider games, and I never have been, but it doesn't take down my enjoyment of this game any less. In fact, just because I actually like the setting of this one and the fact that it uses Mexico and South America and Incans, and I've been on a kind of book reading binge of that style of history at the moment, um, I think I actually prefer it to the second one, which was Rise of the Tomb Raider. And there's some nice little throwbacky stuff in there with some of the outfits you can put on as well, which is really fun. So number four in my list, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'm right here. You can thank me by not breaking anything. Laura! I... What? Abby said not to break anything. I'm not breaking it. I'm restoring the original. Number three on my list is one of the most talked about games this year. It is Spider-Man for the PS4. And what an absolute job they did with this game from just aimlessly swinging around the city to the story they've managed to weave in here. The fact that they are able to start from a point where we don't need to get the origin story of Peter Parker and Spider-Man because guess what? We've had that a hundred thousand times at this point. We're all sick to death of it. And yes, 
it is needed sometimes but the fact that they chose not to use it in this game and where they went with some of the origin stories of some of the Spider-Man villains and added a bit of humanity to some of the characters such as Dr. Octavius before they go insane and become crazy and then you've got the added depth of all of the costumes you can wear think of a spider-man outfit and it is sure to be there i chose to play most of the game as my favorite version of spider-man some people may call me crazy but it is spidey noir the game has so much to offer and i didn't even touch the dlc the amazing things they've done with that and they keep adding more suits as well i think just this week they added some suits from the fantastic four that game was will be playable for a very long time to come and it's just possibly the best Spider-Man game in fact dare I say it the best superhero game that has ever been made so number three for me okay. my game of the year list is Spider-Man on PS4 Number two for me is Pokemon Let's Go, be it Pikachu or Eevee, it doesn't really matter. Now what can I say about this? Anyone who knows me or who's listened to the Glitch Free Gaming podcast for long enough knows that my favourite series in the world is the Pokemon series. And on the build up to this game, I was a little bit sceptical. I was a little bit sceptical of them taking certain aspects out, a little bit sceptical of them adding in Pokemon Go mechanics to catch the Pokemon, but my god, they have revitalised a series that, dare I say it, even though it's one of my favourite series, kind of did need a bit of revitalising. There was a lot of people who are the casual player who'd moved away from Pokemon and this brought a lot of them back, I think, just because a lot of them played Pokemon Go and this brought in some of those mechanics and the fact that you can now see Pokemon in the overworld and choose to not get involved in random encounters is for my money one of the best things they have ever done. Being able to see those Pokemon in the overworld and pick and choose who you want to catch is for my money the way Pokemon should be going forward. I personally think they should bring wild Pokemon battles back, but I think they should be triggered the same way as catching Pokemon was in Pokemon Go. The first entry in Pokemon on the Switch and I really hope to see some of the things they've implemented here in the main series game that we're going to get in 2019 hopefully. I hope they take the main series game and build on the progress they've made in Let's Go. So Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee is my number two game of the year. So I uh, must be boring you uh, but here. What is it? Uh, it's just a little doodle. Eh, you know, entirely worthless, unless you want to wipe your bottom with it. But I wanted to say thank you for the drinks. Well, that's very kind, Charles. Now on to my number one game of the year. This is Red Dead Redemption. For me, there was never going to be another game that made it to the slot. From about the first maybe 10 hours into this game, I was in completely entranced. The world they've built is fantastic. The fact that it is living and breathing in every action you have, whether it be hog tying someone, shooting someone in the head to rob them, even just stealing someone's horse, it all has consequences. People in that world are going to react to you differently based upon how you act in that game. Brother Jorgens was right about you. You are the most wonderful man. Sure, it does have its bad points, such as you being able to have far too much money in your pocket and the whole story revolving around you not actually having any money and having to make more. But the twists and the turns that story take if you choose to ignore the fact that you have a pocket full of $20,000 from side quests, the story in itself is just amazing. It takes twists, it takes turns, you see the growth of the lead character, and then in the epilogue you get to see how the whole thing kind of winds down and most of the characters end up for the rest of their life. They have thought of everything in that game, and the fact is you can turn it back on when the story's finished and wander around and just quite happily trot your horse around or go hunting or go fishing or just anything you want to do in that game without even taking online into consideration for your money 
it's probably one of the most immersive games that you can put in hours and hours of that came out this year. And that's before even going into online. I haven't touched online personally myself, but when I eventually do get a posse together and eventually do go online, the game again will take on a whole new life of its own. So my game of the year for 2018 is Red Dead Redemption and I really don't think there could be anything else that would fit that slot for me. Rockstar completely outdone themselves, taking one of my favourite game series, the Red Dead series, and pushed it to absolute new heights. And that's it from me folks, my top 5 games of the year for you. Make sure to check out the other two on the podcast Game of the Years over on the YouTube channel. And if you haven't yet checked out the 4 podcasts we put out for Game of the Year all 4 days, then head on over to glitchfreegaming.com and check those out for yourself.